Hey guys, Mario Petrov here. Uh, Mario here with me from Debrix, and uh, today's topic is why do companies require a coding interview even if you know you send them some sort of a portfolio, be it existing websites or even GitHub repositories or anything along those lines. Uh, that's a <clears throat> that's a great question. Something that we've also been kind of considering and discussing internally. The thing is that for the vast majority of the companies, uh, there are two kind of main reasons why they do that. Either it's just a standard policy, so they don't really make any difference between people who send you know a coding portfolio and people who just send their CV. And the other half are um, kind of uh, people who are trying to assess whether that source code is uh, something that has been produced by the person who sends that. And it may seem counterintuitive, it may seem like something that, um, <clears throat> you know, you won't guess that someone would do that because it's public and so forth, but it actually happens uh, way too often. Like, I mean, if, if, if you get, you know, 100 of your uh, most popular friends or something and you just browse their name or Google or something, um, and it, it's likely that you'll see some testimonials or references or reviews or something like that uh, from them for existing websites, but they haven't necessarily given their uh, explicit agreement for that particular thing. And it's common for certain agencies and companies and people, obviously individuals, to just try to reshape the truth in some way that isn't really <laughs> true at the end of the day. I mean, we've had people applying with us with their portfolio being projects that we have built internally on site from the get go. Uh, and still they use our projects as references when applying with us. So that's uh, that's something that happens actually. It just happened yesterday, by the way, uh, for yet another time. But anyway, so uh, some other reasons for why, um, you know, companies do expect to kind of perform code interviews, even if you share some portfolio and some, some code uh, with them through GitHub, Bitbucket, uh, or even sending them zip files of stuff that you've done. Uh, first one is productivity and speed. So when, when you're assigned a coding interview, it either happens at the office or it's something that's being assigned as kind of a homework assignment for a couple of days, five days, or some, or some sort of period that kind of is easily measurable. So within that amount of period, the, the hiring, team can kind of decide and evaluate how much work can you get done within, again, that time interval, uh, considering the fact that you're probably already employed full time or, or anything, um, or, or you just, you know, have a limited amount of time to kind of complete the assignment. But that's important because a repo that you have created, uh, if you aren't committing too often, like several times a day or so, it's likely that I mean, the project could have taken a week or a year, and it really isn't that clear from uh, just taking a look at specific repositories. The second thing is that repositories may not be up to date. For example, if I create a GitHub account right now and I push 50 of my projects in order to create my account, uh, all of them are going to be dated kind of from the same month. But those projects would have been developed over the past, say, eight years. Um, and that's you know, something that's worth noting. So the hiring candidate may see something and say, okay, that's an interesting project or that specific candidate has created 50 points in a month. But in reality, that didn't really happen. And some of those extensions, libraries, tools may have been created eight years ago. So the skills may no longer be up to date, which is uh, also kind of important. Uh, also, there's the adaptiveness to new requirements. Uh, so when you build a specific project, when you build a, a pet project, you may be more excited and you may have your own kind of priorities and so forth. But uh, adjusting to specific requirements is another thing. So uh, the hiring team may give you a certain assignment which resembles the types of tasks or activities that are uh, that other developers in the team are uh, adhering to. And this is a good sort of test to understand how does the developer understand those assignments, whether they do have follow-up questions, what sort of follow-up questions they ask, what sort of things they focus on, and so on and so on. So that's also something that, that's kind of important to for, for the most part. Uh, there's also the, the, the compliance with, again, company regulations and guidelines and whatnot. So, again, working on, on a pet project of yours is one thing, but being able to adjust to specific requirements, use existing protocols, uh, or, for example, build 
against a specific version of your programming language or, or anything along those lines is something that happens in the uh, work environment. And that's something that hiring uh, the hiring team and someone kind of sending that homework assignment is, is also checking against. For example, if you're used to building the latest and greatest, but you work, uh, you're about to work in an enterprise company, it's likely that they use a kind of language version or framework version that's five years old. Uh, so I remember we've been uh, building kind of Java, uh, Java 6, I think, or something. Uh, and the, the local team in SAP were still using uh, projects with uh, 1.3.2 or something like that. But in, in the case of PHP, you know, PHP 7, 7 1 and 2 are something that's, you know, again, the, the modern way of writing PHP, but for instance, WordPress still maintains uh, PHP 5.2.4. So if you build for the public, if you build plugins, you still have to comply with the old versions. And those are some some of those regulations, some of those standards. Like you can't build with, for example, Postgres. You have to build with MySQL just because, again, in WordPress, that's the only supported uh, database out of the box. And that's just kind of one, one set of requirements that are kind of important. Uh, there's one more thing. Um, there are actually a couple more things. The first one is priorities. Priorities are also important in a way of, uh, within a limited amount of time, what sort of activities are you going to perform? Are you going to comment your code? Are you going to document it? Are you going to parse it, extract it? Uh, how much are you going to focus on kind of parsing external requests or uh, incoming post queries or incoming form data and so on? So obviously there are, there are best practices and most develop well, many developers can adhere to those practices, but there's a difference between knowing how to do that and accepting that you need to do it no matter what in every single project. So that test project is a good way to assess what would a candidate uh, prioritize and how how is their thinking process working, if I may say so. In other words, do they think that uh, security layers are something that's introduced after the project is done or something that's built alongside the project and same goes for the bugging and logging and everything along those uh, ways so those are some of the main reasons and at the end of the day the last thing i'd like to point out is uh, companies also want to see your most recent skills and that's actually a good thing so if you've built a project which is uh, hasn't been updated for two years in you know the same language and recruiters see that project they may say okay that that candidate is junior for example or they're making some strategic mistakes and and whatnot so we're not going to hire them but if they send you an actual coding interview they may in fact understand that you have learned a lot over the past two years and assess you according to your recent skills which is again actually a good thing so in order to to give you the right offer in order to assess whether you're for example junior mid-level senior whether you're a purely a, a developer or a full stack developer or appropriate for a team leader or something else the recent kind of the the coding interview during the interview process is uh, one great way to uh, assess those specific skills and you know how much up to date you are uh, in terms of, you know, the recent trends in development as well. So that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions and problems or anything that you're struggling with and you want me to cover it, let me know in the comments area below. Uh, and I'm going to consider the, the best questions and record videos uh, over the next few months.